Welcome back. Episode 6 of Drafting Championship Team Around X Player. If you've seen any of the first five, McCaffrey, Hill, Lamb, Jefferson, Chase. Now we have Bijan Robinson. New offensive coordinator, new, new head coach in Atlanta. Seemingly will probably finally use him right with Drake London and Kyle Pitts. It's an oddly exciting time for Falcons fans. And uh, B. John Robinson, it looks like he's going to reap the rewards this year. Um, I, I think he's a great player to build around. Um, he's a good running back. I don't think there are many good running backs that I like taking in the first round. I like his spot, too. I like being able to take a, a bona fide RB1, somebody who, especially with McCaffrey's injury history and with Brees Hall coming back and, and a lot of issues, could easily be running back one. Um, get him at the sixth spot. You know, there there is some 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 allure to that. So without further ado, um, we're going to draft a fantasy football championship team around Bijan Robinson. Again, the roster we use, quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, tight end, two flex, kicker, defense, bench. Again, we use half PPR scoring, so keep that in mind. ADPs adjust based off of your leagues and your league settings. But without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's take him. Number six, Bijan Robinson. Boom. Done. And now we wait to see who comes to us in the second round. Will we have any upsets, any fallers? We do. We do. And for the first time, Travis Etienne is on our board, um, which is interesting. And another faller, Marvin Harrison. Now, um, I understand a lot of people are big on Marvin Harrison. He's an incredible talent. I will say that till the cows come home. Problem is, he's a rookie, and he's playing in an offense with Kyler Murray. And... I don't know how that dynamic is going to work off the bat. I don't know who the leader here is. I think Harrison is a little too soft-spoken. I think Kyler Murray is too soft-spoken. Um, I think there's a chance for there to be unresolved conflict all season. Uh, on top of that, there is so much going on with Marvin Harrison legally with him and his dad. I'm not saying that's going to stop him from getting on the field, but that's something you have to think about for sure. Um, so with him, I like him. Great player. Love him more in Dynasty. Um, for me, I'm doubling up on running backs here. I love Travis Etienne. I think he's an absolute stud. What he can do out of the backfield as a pass catcher and as a runner, he's going to be good. He's going to be involved in every game. Love him to death. We're going to take him here. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we have two running backs. Boom. Bingo, bango, bongo. Starting two running backs are done. Let's see if we get in the third. Okay. And we have some options here. We obviously have Travis Kelsey, Brandon Ayuk, Isaiah Pacheco, Mike Evans, Sam Laporte, and then we have two quarterbacks. I think it's a little too early for quarterbacks here. I think right now you go for wide receivers um, who can make your team the best. And for me, I, I don't love Ayuk. I don't love it. With that being said, do I trust him more as a wide receiver one than Mike Evans? Yes. Do I trust Mike Evans better as a wide receiver two or three? Yes. The reason being, I think on a week-to-week -week basis, Brandon Ayuk can be that superstar. Mike Evans can be that, but I think his model, if you're looking at him as a fantasy player, is more consistency. Um, that's what I'm looking. I think his game is perfect as a wide receiver two. Um, whereas I think Ayuk's boom and bust is good as a wide receiver one. Um and although he will be a bust more times than Mike Evans, in my opinion, um, I think when you have guys that are so good every week, like Bijan Robinson, like Travis Etienne, I think you do go for that higher boom percentage. And so that's why I'm going to go Brandon Ayuk here. And if he gets traded, all the better for him. So we'll take Ayuk as our first wide receiver off the board, see who we get in the fourth round. Perfect. We got a lot of receivers here. And for, uh, you know, a team that goes Bijan and ETN, that's exactly what you're going to look for. And I think that's how the draft is going to play out, too. I think the first round is going to be mostly wide receivers, a lot of running backs at the back end. I think the second round is going to be mostly running backs. So I think the third round, you know, depending on how it falls, I think a lot of teams are not going to need a receiver in the back end of uh, 8 through 10, um, or they're going to go all in on running backs. So the way this plays out, I think, is perfect. You know, you have Nico Collins there, Jalen Waddle, DJ Moore, Cooper Cup. Um, for me, I'm looking at Cooper Cup. I'm looking at Cooper Cup. He's going to have a bounce back here. I think he had some 
pretty good games last year. Um, I think he was banged up most of the year, though. So, you know, I, I, I think we can't hold that against him too much. And again, Brandon Ayuk is more of a, in, in my opinion, you can agree, you can disagree. I think he's more of a, gives you a higher boom, but there are going to be some weeks when he's not great. Um, I think Cooper Cup is steady Eddie. And I think he's what you need in a wide receiver, too. Uh, obviously, no need to go running back here. No need to go quarterback here. I don't think it's smart to wait for wide receiver, two until, you know, round five or six, unless, you know, you have a really, really solid team all around, which, you know, with the tight end spot gone, I don't think, you know, you can get that elite option at every position that allows you to do that. So we're going to go with Cooper Cup here as wide receiver two. And now we have two running backs, two wide receivers wide open for us the last 10 rounds, right? We can take quarterback, tight end, flexes. We can do whatever we want. And that's really nice to have. And so now we get here round number five. And we have some alluring options here. We have C.J. Stroud, Devontae Smith, Trey McBride, and Mark Andrews if you want to go tight end. Alvin Kamara, Dalton Kincaid, tight end as well. Uh, Zay Flowers, Anthony Richardson. For me, this is a tough spot because if Aaron Jones falls, I want Aaron Jones on the sixth. We don't know if he's going to fall, right? I, I love Alvin Kamara, and I love Devontae Smith. With that in mind, I also very much love C.J. Stroud. But as much as I love him, I don't know if I think he's going to be quarterback five this year or if he's worthy of a top five pick. Obviously, at this point, if we took him, he'd be quarterback five. I I, I don't know. I think that's pretty high ceiling for him. I think he can definitely do it, but I don't think you should put all your eggs in that basket. I think you can look at depth pieces, flex pieces right here, right now. So, um for me, I'm looking at this. I'm, I'm thinking wide receiver. Your top two running backs are locked down. I think this is the year to wait on running backs. I think Devontae Smith gives you a great option as a wide receiver three. I think he's going to be fantastic at that this year. And so that's what we're going to do. Again, also have um, no bye week issues with him as well. Um, so we will take Smith after a run of two running backs. We've taken two wide receivers. There goes Aaron Jones. He won't be available in the sixth, but there's plenty of other talent. As we get to the six, we have Trey McBride, Anthony Richardson, Tank Dell, T. Higgins, George Kittle, James Conner, George Pickens. For me, I'm not a huge Trey McBride fan, um, but he finished PPR 7 last year, and, and I think he's going to be even better with another year um, under his belt. And, you know, you look at tight ends, is he better than Kittle? Maybe not, um, but I think he could be more consistent than Kittle. I think that's a possibility, especially uh, with the news of Trent Williams, offensive lineman for uh, the 49ers, having some troubles. You know, I know we took Ayuk there. I, I think he'll be a pretty good fail safe, but, you know, it gets to George Kittle, Debo Samuel. Uh, I, I don't know so much. Um, I don't trust Purdy as much. So um, I don't think stacking up on San Francisco is smart there. But I think Trey McBride is a tight end. You can definitely do worse here. Don't have to worry about tight end the rest of the draft. So we will take him here in the sixth round. And outside of quarterback on one flex, everything that you need right now is already gone. And again, getting that flexibility is huge because we don't know how this draft is going to shake out, right? This is ADP based off of the computer. And even then, it's there are some weird things happening. So, um up here in round seven, you got Kyle Pitts, Christian Kirk, Tra Terry McLaurin, Najee Harris, Kyler Murray, Evan Ingram, Romo Dunze. I, I love Terry McLaurin. I've said that time and time before. I love him, but I think now is the time to get some running back depth. Obviously, Bijan Robinson and Travis Etienne, you know, you hope that nothing happens to him, but. You know, in the case that something does and, you know, they both are the bye week of 12, I think you have a good option here in Najee Harris. I understand people love to bash him, um, but I think a lot of it isn't his fault, right? It's hard to get into a rhythm when your offensive line is crap, when your quarterback is crap, when your offensive play calling is crap. And I think no matter what you think about Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, I think they're going to be better and open up the offense more than Kenny Pickett did. Um I think their offense is going to be a little more explosive, and I think that's going to help him as well. And even if not, he can catch the ball as well. Um, and even if he's not great, he's a good guy that will get you 10 to 12 points. It kind of reminds me of Ramondre Stevenson. 12, 10 to 12 points every week. You know, he might not score a touchdown, but he's going to get the yards. He's going to 
be decent for you. You know, he won't lose you a week. He won't win you a week very often, but he won't lose you a week. So I like him here, but the bye week that's not ending in 12 um, will take him round seven. So now we wait to see how the board goes in round eight. There it is, little running back run at the end. Again, that's why it's great to take running backs when you can. You never know how it's going to fall. So here, you know, you got three three running backs. You got three wide receivers. You got your tight end. Everything's taken. Here, I don't think is a bad place to take quarterback. You know, and I look at a guy like Dak Prescott. We'll pull him up right here. Um, finished quarterback three last last year. He's He's got C.D. Lamb. He's got his offensive line. He's got Ezekiel Elliott back. I know it's not a running back that everybody's going to love, right? But he's got talent there. Um, and you have depth as your team, right? you got three running backs, three wide receivers. You can feel confident in that. Again, you can wait on running backs. I think there are a lot of good wide receivers late. If Dak Prescott, you know, right now, you look at the quarterbacks off the board, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is it hard to believe he'll be quarterback nine? Absolutely not. And I think he's got a very good chance to be quarterback top five. Um, so I think he's a great option here. I think he, this is a place where you take quarterback, and we're going to take him, Dak Prescott, there in the eighth round of the draft. So it swings around to nine, and again, starting lineup is set. So you might as well take whatever's there for you. And what is there for us? is a fallen Calvin Ridley. And I think it's as easy as that. You know, he falls to you. He's a good player. Um, you know, you don't need a tight end, so Ferguson and Joku don't make sense. McConkey, rookie, Zach Moss, new situation. Who knows how that goes? Jonathan Brooks, published. Javante Williams. Calvin Ridley is the best guy on the board. You have that flexibility to take the best guy on the board. That's what we're going to take. So now we are coming to the last five rounds of the draft, round 10. Again, still got those tight ends, those quarterbacks, those wide receivers up here. Um, don't love a ton of pieces, but what I do like, um, Brian Robinson. I, I think he's flying a little too far under the radar. Again, you already have three running backs on this team. If you're looking for a stopgap running back, running back, a guy who can come up if you need him up. But other than that, you know, he's probably going to be a bench piece, but a guy that you can trust if you need him. And I think that's exactly what he is in Washington. I think he'll get more touchdowns than the six that he's projected here. I think we get about 850 rushing yards too. So we're going to take Brian Robinson. Now you got four running backs, four wide receivers. You're all good. You don't have to worry about anything. Five rounds to go. You can do whatever you want. Round 11 comes around. You've got some options here. And, you know, with the running backs, you have Bijan, you have Travis Etienne. That's good. You have Najee Harris. That's solid. Brian Robinson, that's solid. But you don't have a lot of pop there. I think right now is where you take a flyer. Um, there aren't a lot of wide receivers that make me feel really good right here. Obviously, Jameson Williams, I don't trust him at all. Cortland Sutton, he's a great player, but he can't stay on the field. And I question Bo Nix there, at least to start. So for me, I'm going Trey Benson. I understand he's the backup and he's a rookie. But with James Conner injury history and where he was drafted, he's going to get on the field at some point this year. And at the very least, he's going to be a trade bait piece to that James Conner owner who is going to be scared about James Conner's availability. Here in round 12, again, you know, I got to see it to believe it with Cortland Sutton, but round 12, I think, is a good value piece for Cortland Sutton. Um, you know, last three years, PPR 44, 43, and 35 finishes. Right here, you're taking him, what, behind Ayuk, Cup, Devontae Smith, and Calvin Ridley. He's your wide receiver five. I think that's a perfectly fine place to take him. Again, if he's going to finish in the top 50 wide receivers, your wide receiver five in a 10-team league, perfectly fine, perfectly good place to take him. And guess what? If Bo Nix does great, if he hits the ground running, he can definitely get more than that. Um, and they're going to be playing from behind a lot because Denver kind of sucks and is in a relatively tough division. I say that with how bad the Raiders are, but uh, they're going to be passing a lot. So Cortland Sutton is a good wide receiver five here. So three rounds left. Um, again, don't really need anything. Maybe a playmaker. We'll see if he falls to us. He does not. There goes TJ Hawkinson. Again, I, I don't know why he's here. Tyler Lockett. If he's available to you in the last three rounds, you take him every time. Um, he's been the model of consistency. I get he's older. I still think he's the most trustworthy wide receiver in this offense. And so you take him here. We come to the 14th round, and we'll pause it here. Now it's a little tougher. There's not a lot here to scrape by on. 
you have enough wide receivers, you don't need that. So now we're saying who's the running back, and we'll mix it up a little bit. Aaron Jones is getting older, um, and his second in command is Ty Chandler. I like what I've seen out of him. I like him as a pass catching back. Um, Aaron Jones does get dinged up a lot. He was dinged up a lot last year. Um, I think Ty Chandler is a good backup to have. Now, keep an eye on him. Uh, they might Minnesota very well could sign another running back. That would demote him a little bit. But in round 14, you're taking flyers. I think that's perfectly fine. And to finish it up, round 15, I think you don't even think about it. You take the boy, Tyler Algier. We've talked about him. You know, you already have Bijan. Why not take his backup? Boom. I mean, I mean, think about it. You know, now now you don't have to worry if Bijan gets hurt. He got his backup, who is more than capable. So to recap, building a championship team around, B- around Bijan Robinson. Bijan Robinson and ETN back-to-back in the first and second. IU Cup Smith run in the third, fourth, and fifth. Trey McBride in the sixth. Najee Harris in the seventh. Dak Prescott in the eighth. Calvin Ridley in the ninth. You got Brian Robinson, Trey Benson in the 10th and 11th. Cortland Sutton and Tyler Lockett in the 12th and 13th, and Ty Chandler and Tyler, excuse me, Algier in the 14th and the 15th. You got a good team. You know, you got a good team. You got two very good running backs. Got some running backs can come up. You know, they won't be anything solid, but, you know, they'll be good stop gaps. You got Algier in case Robinson's hurt. Um, and you got good wide receivers. You got good wide receivers that can get a lot of. P- especially if you were in a PPR league with this, with Cup and IU, that's a good team as well. So um, gives you a lot of depth, good quarterback, really good at every position, really, you know, not elite at a ton of positions outside of running back um, and your wide receiver too, in my opinion, with Cup. Um, but you have no weaknesses. And that's a big thing because if you have a weakness coming out week one and you get an injury, you're really screwed. You have a team like this, you get an injury, you can definitely manage it. So um, let us know what you thought about the draft, what you thought about it shaking out. Is this a position you want to draft in or not? Let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and watch our other videos in case your ADP doesn't end up with B.